Welcome back to the PhoneGap Essentials course on NetTuts Plus Premium. In this lesson, we will set up our development environment for iOS and export our first Hello World app. There are many things we need to do, but we will take it easy and go one step at a time. From the Cordova docs, you can access the Getting Started guide for each platform. Cordova can export to many different platforms, but to do that, PhoneGap needs access to each SDK. For iOS, we need Xcode. For Android, on the other hand, we need the Android SDK written in Java. Ideally, you should install the full environments for each platform that is most important to you. We don't need to install all seven development environments. For the rest, you can use the Cloud Build service, which we will look at in Lesson 4. The Cloud Build service also helps people who don't have a Mac to export iOS apps. So let's see what we need to set up our iOS development environment for PhoneGap. Before we start, you'll need an Intel-based computer with Mac OS X. All Apple tools required for building iOS apps will only run on the OS X operating system. You will also need Xcode 4.5 and iOS 6 SDK. To submit apps to the Apple Store, you'll always need to have a latest version of all the SDKs. Apple will not let you submit an app if it has not been run and tested on iOS 6. This can be downloaded from the App Store, but you'll need to be a registered Apple developer. We also need to install the Xcode command line tools and have an iOS device. Your first step, if you haven't already done so, is to register as an Apple developer. This will give you access to the Member Center, where you can register your applications for testing and distribution. It also gives you access to Xcode and the iOS 6 SDK. So assuming you don't have an account, you're going to have to set one up. Here we choose the iOS developer program, which costs $99 a year. We will need to choose an enrollment type and register as either an individual or a company. We'll need to submit our personal information and then finally we'll need to purchase and activate our program. The registration process is broken up into five steps. You need to choose an Apple ID, you can create a new one or you can sign in with your iTunes ID. You'll need to fill out your personal profile, your professional profile, agree to the terms and conditions and finally pay for your registration with a credit card. I won't take you through the whole process, as it's pretty straightforward and is outside the scope of the tutorial. When you're finished, you'll have access to the Members Center, and you'll be able to sign in with your Apple ID and password. We'll explore this more later on in the tutorial. Open up the Mac App Store and log in with the details you just used to create your developer registration. All you have to do is search for Xcode, and it will be the first result. Although I am starting with a clean installation, and doing everything from scratch for this tutorial, I had previously installed Xcode, as it is a 1.8 gigabyte download, and I didn't want to make you wait through it. Xcode can be installed with a single click. With Xcode installed in my Applications folder, I'm just going to add it to my dock. If we open up Xcode, we can now install the Xcode command line tools. The first time you open Xcode, you will have to agree to the license terms and conditions, and install some system components. So let's install the Xcode command line tools. Cordova uses these tools to automate certain tasks, such as creating a new project and automatically changing paths and references in existing projects. You'll find the command line tools in the Xcode preferences, under downloads, command line tools. You may also find other useful tools here as well. Here we can see the iOS 5 and 5.1 simulators if you need to test your app against older iOSs. For now we'll install the command line tools. OK, that's all done. Now let's download the latest version of Apache Cordova from cordova.apache.org. You can see the download link here. You can go ahead and select Cordova 2.3.0 source zip. Now you might notice that I have two different versions here one from apache.org and one from PhoneGap. Initially I downloaded the version from PhoneGap and noticed that the package did not exactly match what was being described in the Getting Started Guide. The Getting Started Guide also had some broken links. Either way, I created a new folder called SDKs in my documents and I'm going to extract Cordova 2.3.0 source to this directory. I'm going to discuss the differences between the two of them in just a second. As you will notice, I've extracted Cordova to a new folder which includes the version number. 
It is always important to keep each version of your Cordova SDK separate. As time goes on and new versions come out, you may have some projects that rely specifically on one version or another. As the API changes and method calls may change, an old project may no longer work with the newest version and you'll need to do some refactoring. Inside the Cordova folder, we need to navigate to find the Cordova iOS zip. Extract that into the same directory, and this folder now contains all of the relevant libraries and files to create iOS apps. As you may remember from lesson one, PhoneGap and Cordova are technically different, but at this point they are pretty much just the same libraries. The PhoneGap SDK download is just packaged differently. Inside there is not all of the zip files you saw before in the Cordova library. But most importantly, there is a library folder, a lib folder, and inside that is an iOS folder. Here you'll see the structure is exactly the same as the zip file that we extracted in the Cordova installation. The important folder to remember is the bin folder, which we'll be using to create a new project. Xcode projects for Cordova are created by invoking a script file via the command line. Firstly, we need to decide where we want to store all of our project files for our various PhoneGap apps. In Documents I'm going to create a Projects folder and inside here we can save all of our projects. To use the command line to create a new project we need to open up Terminal. If you can't see it on your dock simply use Spotlight to search for it. In Finder navigate to our Cordova 2.3.0 projects fo folder SDK is Cordova we need to open up the Cordova-iOS folder and locate the bin folder we then drag the bin folder into our dock and onto the terminal icon this will open up a default terminal window with the path already set to the bin directory from here we can use the create command which you can actually see in the folder here to create new projects. To create a project we need to use the create command with three different parameters. One is the project location. This is the directory where the Xcode project and files for our application will be located. In our case it will be inside projects. We don't need to actually create the folder, in fact we mustn't because Cordova does that for us. Next we need to choose a package name. When submitting apps to the App Store this must be the reverse domain name app ID that is created by the Apple provisioning portal. We'll be looking at that later but for now since we will not be submitting this sample app we will just use a generic example. And the third is a project name. This is the actual name of the project. Most developers will make this the same name as their application. So let's execute the create command to create a new project. We start with create, then the path where we want to save our project files, then our package name. In our case, we're going to use our domain name. Now remember, this is our reverse domain name. In our case, it's world. And finally, our project name. As you can see, it has created a brand new folder in projects called Hello World. If, however, you run into a common problem and you see the error, no developer directory found, it is most likely because you have more than one version of Xcode installed on the system, or perhaps you upgraded from an older version of Xcode. The solution is to run the Xcode select command to set the location correctly. If you have installed Xcode in the default location, the command will look like this. It's a sudo command and executes the user bin xcode select switch command to change your xcode directory to applications slash xcode dot app slash content slash developer. For more information on this please consult the iOS getting started guide. 
Please note that you can also use additional parameters when you create your project. The most useful of these is the shared parameter. This allows all of your PhoneGap projects to share the same SDK. This is useful when collaborating with a team. As you can see, our project folder contains Cordova Lib. And each Cordova project you create with the create method will be packaged with its own library. By using the shared parameter after create, we can ensure that our project uses the Cordova library located in SDKs Cordova 2.3.0. If you have created your project using the first method, but would like to modify your project to use a shared library, in the same bin folder you can use the update Cordova subproject command, followed by your project directory. But for now we'll just use the default setup. Now it's time to run our application. Using Finder, navigate to the location where you created the app. In our case it's in Documents, Projects, Hello World. Double click on the Hello World .xcode proj file to open the project in Xcode. This is what your screen should look like. Most importantly to us is the config.xml file where we have all of our project settings and the www folder. In here are the HTML, CSS and JavaScript files that we will use to create our project. It's also where we'll keep images and other resources. To run our app on a simulator, make sure you select Hello World and then choose a simulator. Clicking on the Run button will compile our project together and deploy it to the simulator. You may be asked to enable developer mode on your Mac. This will save you from always entering your password whenever Xcode requires authentication. The build is successful and it will now be deployed to the simulator. Here we can see our simulator loading. Here you can see the execution of the code that was located in the www folder. It is a simple bit of HTML and CSS that tells us that the device is ready. Having a closer look at the code, we can see a bit of the anatomy of a very simple phone gap application. As you can see, it looks like a pretty standard web page. We have a title, a body, divs, p tags, heading tags. We have a link to a CSS file to control the styling, but more importantly, we are importing the Cordova 2.3.0 JS file. This file is our link to all of the smartphone's functionality you would not usually be able to access from a normal web page. Luckily we don't have to change anything in here. We control the functionality of our app from the index.js file. Just taking a quick look, you can see that we have an app completely encapsulated in a single object. That app then has an initialize function, which as you can see, is called in the HTML file. This may well be the only function call that is made from the HTML file, as all of our other behavioral bindings can be made from within our index.js file. We'll obviously be going into much more detail on these elements in later lessons. This simple app was simply waiting for one single event, which is the device ready event. When PhoneGap is completely ready and functional, it will fire off this event to tell your app that it can commence. So in this case, when the device is ready, we fire the onDeviceReady function, which then in turn fires another function called ReceivedEvent, which hides our connecting to device message and shows our device is ready message. Don't forget that you can also deploy to the iPad simulator which may need to be resized depending on how big your monitor is.